Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Bedtime Stories. Hello everyone and welcome. How are we all doing today? I hope you're all well. I know the weather's not been very kind. It has been raining a lot, but I hope you're all well and healthy. Now, have you brushed your teeth? Are you changed in your pyjamas and cosy? I'm ready for today's bedtime story. I have chosen a very special book for you today. It's really interesting and really, really nice. Now the book that I've chosen is called Going to Mecca. Now who can tell me where Mecca is? Very good. Mecca is in Saudi Arabia. Fantastic. Are we all ready? Let's get started. Going to Mecca. Come with the pilgrims as they set out on a journey. A journey of patience to the city of Mecca. Some call the Hajj the journey of a lifetime. Fly with the pilgrims as they make their way there. Dress with a pilgrim as he stands barefoot, a sheet round his shoulders, another round his waist. Now he is the same as thousands of others, no richer status, to tell them apart. They're all the same. Call with a pilgrim as she utters a prayer and says the words that will make her draw near. Labbaik, Allahumma labbaik. Here I am, O oh my Lord. Here I am, and above and around her, thousands of others are making the same exact call, just like her. Gaze with the pilgrims, gaze with the pilgrims, as they look at the black stone. The black stone was sent down from the heavens. Those nearby give it a kiss. Those far away point at it, just as the prophet did so long ago. Stand with the pilgrims as they face the Kaaba. Head bare, feet in sandals, with thousands of others Strangers, sisters, strangers, brothers. They stand and then move like a great swirling sea. Like a great swirling sea they round and round. The great crowd surges like a whirlpool, tornado of blurred faces and voices. Pray with the pilgrims. As he stands, then bows and offers a prayer. At the station of Ibrahim, drink with a pilgrim. As he savours the sweetness of the blessed spring water at the well of Zamzam. Reflect with the pilgrims as they stand on Asafa, thinking of Hajar, the wife of Ibrahim, who searched the whole desert, finding no one to help her, as her son Ismail cried out with thirst. Walk 
walk with the pilgrims as they cross just like Hajar, the valley that lies in between the two hills, where she ran and ran backwards and forwards seven times looking for water. Weep, weep with the pilgrims as they think of her pain. Wait, wait with the pilgrims as the ninth day approaches and the city swells with pilgrims from all lands, from all cities and steppe, from island and deserts. They all congregate to continue the journey. Travel, travel with the pilgrims to the place they call Mina, where the great crowd will slumber until morning comes. Go, go with the pilgrims to Mount Arafat, where the great tide of people settle for the day and voices are raised and hearts are emptied as tears and cries pierce the desert air. Now to Muzdalifa and then back to Mina where they search for seven pebbles to stone the Jamarat. By now the crowd is surging. They fight to keep their grip as all around our bodies dust, air and sky. After the sacrifice, they will feed the poor. The pilgrims have their hair shaved off. They make tawaf and sa'i once more. For they have crossed the stormy sea. They have made it to the shore. And now their bodies ache and every limb is sore. But even so, their hearts race and their souls roar high and free. For they have made that journey, feet in sandals, heads bare, with thousands of others, strangers, sisters, strangers, brothers. Now all the pilgrims are home from their journey, their journey of patience to the city of Mecca, the trip of a lifetime, a pillar of faith. Welcome to the pilgrims, now home from Hajj. Welcome home. That's it. That's the end of the story. Did you all enjoy the story of going to Mecca? Did we learn anything from this story? This is one of my favourite books. And it teaches me to be patient. What did you learn from the story? Think about what you learnt. Now I think, because you've been sitting so nicely and listening so carefully, I will read you one more story. I have chosen for you the swirling hijab. <laughs> the swirling hijab. Oh, that sounds very nice. My mum's hijab is black and soft and wide. I think the girls might enjoy this story a little bit more. A fort for me to hide inside. 
A ship sail flagging in the air. A comforter when she's not there. Bitskunski stan. A Bedian tent. A wedding sari. They've got some nice pictures in this book. Really colourful. A cloth for my tea party. That sounds nice, doesn't it? She could use it for her tea party. What else can she do with the scarf? A warrior's queen's cloak. That's very interesting. She could be a superhero as well. Or maybe you could be a superhero with your mum's hijab. A nomad's baggage. That's quite interesting. A blanket when I need a rest. But covering my mum as part of her faith is what the hijab does best. Amazing. Who enjoyed that story? I thought this one was really cool. She could do lots of things with her mum's hijab, couldn't she? But I love, best of all, when she said, but covering my mum as part of her faith is what hijab does best. I think that's my favourite part. What can you do with your mum's hijab or scarf? Maybe you wear a hijab yourself. And if you do, that's fantastic, that's amazing. Because as we know, hijab is part of our identity, who we are, to show our faith and belief in God, who is Allah, our creator. And that's why girls wear hijab, as a sign of belief, obedience, and also as part of who we are. So, let's do a quick recap before we end the night today for bedtime stories. What was the first book that I read to you? Can you remember? It was called Going to Mecca. Should we do a quick recap about what we learned? Now, I have learned so many things about this story. My particular favorite part of the story was Call with the pilgrims as they utter a prayer and say the words that will make her draw near. Can anyone remember what that was? What was that word or sentence that she called in prayer? Can you remember? That's good, very good. It was, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik. Who can tell me what that means? So, in English, the translation means, Here I am, O oh my Lord, here I am. Now that particular prayer is very important as we can learn from the story when anybody goes to Mecca to perform the pilgrim, to perform the Hajj, which is one of the five pillars of Islam. We should say, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik. Here I am, O oh my Lord, here I am. Can we say that again? Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik. Very good. Here I am, O oh my Lord, here I am. And that prayer, also known, known as dua, brings us closer to Allah. And we let Allah know. Oh Allah, we are here. We are close to you. Please accept our prayers. Another part of the book that I really enjoyed 
and I learnt about was the black stone. Who can remember the part about the black stone? Can you remember? The black stone was sent down from the heavens by Allah. Very good, you remembered. And those nearby kiss it and those far away point at it. So the black stone we know is sent down from the heavens. So that's another thing that we learnt in today's story. Should we choose one more thing? Another thing that really, really was interesting to know was when the pilgrims reflect as they stand on Asafa and they think of Hajar, the wife of Prophet Ibrahim salam, who searched the whole desert finding no help as her son Ismail cried for thirst. Now we know that Prophet Ibrahim's wife Hajar, she ran seven times back and forth and if you didn't know, you know now, for water for her son and this was a test of patience patience to see how patient we can be and we learn from the people that came before us that patience is very important and that's where the special water Zamzam came from. Allah quenched Ismail's thirst with the Zamzam water. So if anybody in your family is blessed and goes to Mecca and brings you Zamzam water, you make sure you drink it because it's really special and you can make a prayer as well. Now, how about the second story? The swirling hijab. What did we learn from this book? Were there any interesting parts that drew your attention? I think I mentioned earlier that my favorite Excuse me. My favourite part was when she said, but covering my mum as part of her faith is what the hijab does best. That was my part of the story. Which part was your favourite? She could do so many things with her hijab. She could be a queen warrior. She could wear the hijab as a sari. She could use it as a cloth for her tea party. Now there's so many things we can do if we use our imagination. If we use our imagination, we can do lots of things with a hijab or a scarf. But most of all, the hijab is best worn on our heads and around our body. And as we know, hijab is part of our faith and you are so young now and you'll be learning so much about hijab and as you grow up you will understand that it's part of who you are, your belief, your obedience to God, to Allah who created you. Hijab is our uniform and it represents who we are as Muslims. I hope you're not too tired but if you are that's very good. Have you brushed your teeth and if you haven't please go and brush your teeth, get ready in your pyjamas and cosy and relax and get ready for bed and I will see you again soon for our next bedtime stories. Have a very good night. Assalamu alaikum.